Christian churches must be made to affirm homosexuality, says the New York Times columnist. This is dangerous ground. You know we're living in the last days where people utilize their First Amendment constitutional rights to shut down others' First Amendment constitutional rights. Let's read this article. A New York Times columnist and a corporate leader have agreed that Christian churches must, and I quote the word must, be convinced or coerced to change their teachings on sexual morality and abandon an ossified doctrinal teaching that sex out of heterosexual marriage is sin. Frank Bruni wrote that traditional Christianity, whether among evangelicals, Catholics, or Orthodox, provides the greatest resistance to normalizing homosexuality in the United States in a recent column in the New York Times. What a depraved mindset. Go with me. Romans chapter 1. This is depraved. What we're reading here is a depravity of the mind. You have Frank Bruni who wrote that traditional Christianity. I'm going to repeat it again. That traditional Christianity, whether among evangelicals, Catholics, or Orthodox, provides the greatest resistance to normalizing homosexuality in the United States. So it's because we Christians are here preaching what we preach, which is the word of God, with regard to a man lying with another man and a woman lying with another woman as an abomination, according to the book of Leviticus, according to the book of Romans, that because we speak as oracles of God, we are stopping the devil, come on now, praise be to God, from normalizing homosexuality in the U.S. See, we, we got to continue to speak boldly in these last days because this is the agenda. What we just read from this one columnist is the agenda. He's not the only one. My friends, there are hundreds, if no, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands, of men and women just like Frank Bruni who are seeking to force the church to be quiet and shut up about homosexuality. To be quiet and shut up about sex out of marriage, which is called fornication. I can almost guarantee that they're probably going to get their way very soon. Because a lot of churches who are nonprofit, who are 501c3 nonprofit organizations, have decided to enslave themselves to the government. I'm talking about mega churches and small churches have decided to allow the government to come into the pulpit and to lead and guide the messages every Sunday and Wednesday night. It's not all churches, but I will say this, that there's coming a time and we're living in those days. We're living in the days now where the government is going to say on behalf of the people that in order for you to keep your tax exempt status you are going to have to tweak your sunday messages to be more inclusive and not hate romans let's read romans chapter one romans chapter one uh, we'll start with verse 18 we got to read this thing in context because we're living in the days we're living in that time we are the last generation we are my friends we are the last generation can you see it can you see that we're the last generation just by this one article? Just by this one article, we're the last generation? It's no exaggeration. We're the last generation. Jesus, the day of the Lord is at hand. Are you ready? Are you ready to not love your life to the very death? Are you ready to stand in the evil day having done everything there for all to stand? Are you ready to overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony? Are you ready? The day of the Lord is at hand. You have the world seeking to infiltrate the body of Christ, seeking to infiltrate the church. And I'm going to tell you something. They're in the churches already. They're in the churches. About 50% of the body of Christ has already been swayed by the evil one, by the so-called lowercase g, God of this world, to compromise the statutes and the word of God. Don't let it be found so among you, brethren, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, in the name of Jesus. 
Don't let it ever be found among any of you in Jesus' name. Let's read Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. You see, God has shown this New York Times columnist, Frank Bruni, that he's real. That his word is real. He's shown him so much that Frank Bruni, this New York Times columnist, had no choice but to say that the resistance of Normalizing homosexuality in every facet of the United States of America is simply because the Christians and their word. We need to get it out. We need to now coerce churches. We need to make churches, force churches to affirm homosexuality. My friends, God's wrath will be unveiled on the unrighteous. That's what it says here. That's what we're reading. He may not like it, but we're not going to shut up about it. Verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, this man knows God. This man knows God. That's why he talks about God. Atheists, you know God. That's why you talk about him. That's why you're attacking him. That's why you're trying to go against him. You're trying to go against something you so calmly don't exist because you know he exists. You know God. And it says here, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attrib attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile, foolish in their hearts and their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. I want to make sure you guys see the headline. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. And worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You get all this climate change talk. Save the ocean. Save the fish. Save Nemo. They're worshiping the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. This is where you know we're living in the last days when both are happening simultaneously. You have homosexuality and then you have bestiality. Men loving animals so much that they're going to sell their soul for the so-called beast, the mark of the beast. He says, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature with it rather than the creator for this reason. God gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness and sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder and strife, deceit, backbiters, haters of God, violent and proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, and unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. 
Christian churches must be made, the New York Times columnist states, must be made to affirm homosexuality. We're living in the last days.